Hey what's up you guys, my name is Michelle and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I want to talk about my experience studying abroad in China so far. Just to give you a brief explanation about my background, I am from Indonesia. I am taking undergraduate studies in Xi'an Chiaotong Liverpool University in Suzhou, China. My major is financial math and I am currently on my second year, fourth semester. I've received so many questions about, you know, my experience living in China so far and my impression of the city, what I think about SJTLU, or just life in general. So I thought I would just, you know, put a video out there containing all that you need to know or all that I already know and that I'm going to tell you. Anyways, <laughs> I have written almost everything that I can think of. Hopefully I can touch on all the topics that I've written here because there's quite a lot of things that I poured out of my brain. I also opened a question box on my Instagram a few days ago so that if anyone has any questions about uh, SJTLU or just China, they can ask me and I'm going to answer them in today's video. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, before we begin, I'm going to put it out there that I can be quite inarticulate at times. I also have really monotone voice, so if this bores you, then you've been warned. First and foremost, I want to talk about my background, how I decided to study in SJTLU. During my senior year of high school, my original plan was not to go to China. I was going to go to Hong Kong and I applied to a university there. I got accepted. I got half off of my tuition fee, which is amazing because if I didn't get any scholarship, then I wasn't gonna go to Hong Kong. And then everything was going well. I was very positive. I was very like optimistic. And then the Indonesian national exam came around. That was the only thing that um, sabotaged my way of going to Hong Kong because I got really, really bad score on my national exam. And get this, my worst score was in English subject. See, I've always seen like some sort of plot holes in the whole national exam and now they don't have it anymore, which is just... God, if, if only it happened in my year, then I probably wouldn't be making this video about China right now. But anyways, um, that national exam took my scholarship away. I was still accepted into the university, but I was not gonna get any scholarship at all. At the time, I was already accepted into SJTLU with 30% of scholarship. And obviously, your girl decided to go to SJTLU because I was not gonna go to Hong Kong without any scholarship. And that's how I like decided I was gonna go because SJTLU was like my second option. It was actually my last option, but you know, just to like be nice. It's my second option. How I knew about the school is, I guess in the back of my mind, I always knew that I was gonna go study abroad. And even though I would, like, if I can get anything that I want in the world, I really want to go to either Canada or US, but obviously that is kind of out of my reach, both financially and academically. So yeah, with that information aside, I knew that I was gonna go to a country where I can learn how to speak a foreign language, which in this time and era, Chinese seems like a really great option because it's like a tool that you can have, a skill set that can really benefit me. But that made me kind of lean towards China. And then the second thing is, I was only going to go to an international institution. There's no way I'm gonna do the whole four years with only Chinese. That's, that's way out of my league, bro. And then I knew about SJTLU from my senior in high school. She went there and I asked her a ton of stuff. Like, God, she was like the kindest person ever because she answered all of my questions and all of my mom's questions. Um, and I was pretty convinced that this university is really good and she seems really happy there. The environment seems really promising. I also saw the facilities, which to be honest, really, really intrigued me because they just seem so modern, which in reality, they are cool and they're modern, but we'll get to that later. With all of that coming together, I decided to go to SJTLU and until now, I still didn't regret a single thing. I didn't regret, you know, all the past that have been curved, craved, craved, <laughs> carved. What is English? Yeah, I mean, like, I just I'm glad that I end up in SJTLU. Uh, I'm having a great time so far. Well, at least until this whole pandemic thing happened. But yeah, that's that's the whole background. When I first arrived to China, I honestly did not have any expectation at all. 
I don't know why, I guess because it was my last option. Well, I wasn't disappointed that I didn't get into Hong Kong, but obviously there was some sort of like, what if going on. And so I had zero expectation. But I remember the second I arrived into Suzhou, and I was taking the taxi from the train station because um, the airport was in Shanghai, and then we took a bullet train to Suzhou. And then in the taxi ride from the Suzhou train station to my dorm, I was in awe of how beautiful the city was. I heard all these rumors about China being dirty or like unorganized, but honestly, those rumors are just 100% false because Suzhou is really clean and organized and just beautiful and modern. And I was in love with the city. The first time I got there, I was like, wow, I can't believe that this is what I'm getting. All right, so fast forward to the first few weeks or the first few months of being in China. I mainly survived because of fellow Indonesian students. There are a ton of Indonesian students. I think Indonesia is the second second biggest proportion of international students after Korea. So there were just so many Indonesians. There's also a Sucho Indonesian student community, SISC, and they were very, very helpful in like showing us how to survive in the city. I really don't know what to talk about. Honestly, overall, I just love SJTLU and I love Sucho. Um, I'm sure it's different for everybody because there are people who, you know, um, maybe they don't like being alone and having to do things alone, but I, I crave that ever since I was a baby. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But like, honestly, I just really love that the lifestyle that I can have in Sucho, the freedom and the independence and the flexibility of organizing your own timetable, your own schedule, it's just, it's all I've ever wanted. So yeah, I mean, it's no wonder that I'm so happy in Sucho and SGTLU. Most of my friends and most people that I know um, actually find Sucho enjoyable. I've asked around, trust me. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the city of Sucho. Sucho is divided into New Sucho and Old Sucho. The part SJTLU and you know the places around it is in the New Sucho. It's quite far from the Old Sucho, but if you want to go and visit, then you can easily go to Old Sucho, and it's, it's it's a beautiful place. It's lots and lots of river and lake. It's just water everywhere, honestly, but it's so beautiful. It is very convenient to go anywhere, um, but most importantly, in the campus area, there's always buses going, you know, from the dorm to the campus, from the dorm to the mall, from the dorm to the Times Square. There are multiple supermarkets, tons of restaurants near the school and dorm area, and oh my gosh, there are an infinite amount of boba tea chains. That is the main source of all this chubbiness, but it's heaven, it's heaven on earth. <laughs> there are so many milk tea chains and they're all so so good. Oh my gosh, I miss Sucho. Dude, this is such a bad time to talk about Sucho because I've been missing Sucho ever since I knew that we were gonna be on lockdown and here I am reminiscing on the old good old times. I'm rambling, sorry. One amazing thing that beats all the good things in China is this shopping app called if you haven't heard about it, then I'm sure you've heard about Alibaba, found by Jack Ma. I'm sure you've heard about it. If you haven't, then just Google it up. You'll see instant results. But Taobao is basically this shopping site that has literally everything you can ever need. Pricey things, luxury things, very, very incredibly, unbelievably cheap things. You got it. You want something? You go to Taobao. I'm not trying to like come off as a shopaholic or like someone who likes to spend money on shopping sites but what I'm trying to say is that Taobao makes everything 10 times more convenient because if you ever need anything at all, you can get it from Taobao. I also love how diverse the people are because there's a lot of international students going to SJTLU and so the environment is obviously filled with international students. And I think it's just exciting and beautiful to experience that, especially when you grow up in a country where there's not a lot of diversity going on. It's an exciting thing to experience. Another thing is the public transportation in Suzhou is very, very convenient. You can take buses, you can take MRT or subways or metro, whatever you call it. I usually either take the bus or walk to school. There is also a plus point because the environment is very, very safe. Other times, if I want to go someplace further, I will take the TT, which is basically Uber 
Another thing that I love about living in China is that almost all kinds of payments use Alipay. Man, I really hope you've heard about Alipay, but if you haven't, then it's basically just like a transaction app and everybody in China uses it. So you don't, you hardly ever use cash, you just deposit money into your Alipay account, which is in your phone, and then whenever you want to pay for things, you just scan it. And that is incredible like every time i go back home to indonesia it's such a hassle having to you know take out cash and having your hands all dirty and take the change i mean money is still money obviously but it's just a hundred times more convenient and easier and faster with alipay and it's incredible you pay the titi with alipay you buy from taobao with alipay you buy food you buy anything anything at all you even pay your tuition fee using alipay <laughs> Look guys, the city is modern, okay? Suzhou is modern. If there's anybody who ever told you otherwise, then don't believe them. There are malls, there are sports centers, there are nightclubs, so don't worry. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about SGTLU. Also, I'm sorry if you can hear anyone talking outside. I mean, everyone is on quarantine and my walls are pretty thin. So just ignore that. Focus on my voice. As you tell you, first thing that comes to mind, great facilities, amazing, cool, modern building, very architecturally, ar architecturally pleasing. Is that a word? Except for the foundation building, which for the first year students, um, you're going to have to go through the foundation building phase, which foundation building is essentially the first building as you tell you ever made, and so it is the oldest. And it's the worst. <laughs> Sorry to say, but if you're a first year student, you're going to have to experience a whole year in the foundation building. It's not nice, it's kind of gross, the toilets are nasty, but it's okay, you'll get through it. Before you realize, you will go to the second year and experience South Campus and it's all just amazing from there. I think my first semester was probably the best learning experience out of all. I got very lucky on the teacher's card. I had the best best teachers my first semester, especially my calculus one and my Chinese teacher. The first year is basically like the foundation and the leveling out of all the new students that came in. So it wasn't hard at all for me because um, it was like learning what I learned in high school. During the whole first semester, the teachers could actually teach and after that, I just really depended so heavily on self-study. I mean, I could pay attention, I just don't. And I prefer self-study because most of the times I can't really understand what the teachers are saying. Some of the teachers there, their pronunciation can be a little bit tricky sometimes. It can be kind of hard to follow. So most of the time, I just resort to self-study. The food is very, very accessible. There are tons of restaurants and like student cafeterias so you don't you don't need to worry about that i think the only thing you need to worry is getting bored because you can get sick of the food there pretty quickly but but like option wise there are tons of things that you can choose from i will warn you though um there are very few international restaurants there are sushi but the sushi is like chinese sushi there are burgers but it's like mcdonald's the good burgers are either very expensive or just non-existent there are tons of korean foods though there's also korea town which is amazing so yeah the, the options for international foods are very limited but i don't really find that to be a problem because i mean i go back home like once or twice a year and i can just fulfill all my craving when i get back home i've been asked quite a lot of questions about the learning experience and I don't know, I feel like it's pretty basic. Speaking from my own experience as a financial math major, the subjects can be pretty challenging. Um, you know, actually it's pretty freaking challenging. They're pretty hard, not gonna lie. As JTLU's module is pretty hard. There are usually five to seven final exam subjects. It's not the hardest, but it's also not the easiest. So, I mean, if you can just manage your time well, you don't have to be the most diligent and focused and smartest person to survive but also if you're just sleeping all day if you're playing games you never pay attention you never revise and you never do any of your homework then you're screwed that was kind of harsh i'm really sorry that's not what i meant i meant just like you know as a warning oh i have to talk about the street food in suzhou okay so every single night just outside of my apartment complex i live in parfait so just outside of parfait dorm there's always this night street food it's called shaokao usually they come out at 
11, 12 and my friends and I just like to go down there and buy food and have a good time it's very unhealthy, the food itself and the fact that you eat it at midnight but it's such a guilty pleasure I think it's one of the best things about my life in Suzhou like you buy food from Chaka after you have the craziest time in the clubs to just fill that empty stomach it's great, it's, it's a great thing okay so I think that's the whole general overview about Suzhou and SJTLU I'm not going to talk about my favorite things about living in Suzhou and my least favorite things the best thing I find about living in Suzhou is the freedom that I can get which this is not just Suzhou if you study abroad anywhere at all you can probably relate to what I'm about to say but having that sense of freedom the flexibility to organize your own time and pace I just, I am so in love with my pace and rhythm of life whenever I'm in Sucho because, because I don't really have to worry about, you know, me being a burden to other people I don't have to worry about anyone worrying about me I can go places by myself because that's not really something that I can do here I can set my own schedule, have my own space I'm not saying that it isn't great back here, back home but I've always been the kind of person who really really values her own alone time and personal space so studying abroad fits me really well again the environment and the people if you've heard rumor about local chinese being rude or just ignorant then it is not 100 percent true because based on my experience the chinese the locals are very very kind especially if they know that you're a foreigner they're so welcoming and accepting and nice like obviously it's not the case for everyone but for the most part they're very very warm and nice to you. And last but not least, my favorite thing about living in China is Taobao, which I've talked about, and VPN. Oh my gosh, you can have access to everything. Of course, you have to pay for VPN, and it'll probably be easier if you don't have to use VPN, but honestly, I think VPN is like such a great way to like gain access to basically everything. For example, Netflix. If you change the country of your VPN, you can also change the country of you know the Netflix origin and you can access way more movies or TV shows so yeah that's awesome now talking about the cons or like my last favorite part about Suzhou the first thing is that you will get bored of the food pretty quickly because you will realize that they actually taste quite similar to each other you'll also likely to gain weight because the food there is not really the healthiest they use so much oil and so much MSG and there are tons of milky chains and it's so like it's impossible to say no to. I also heard my roommates from the UK complain about like missing food from back home so I guess one advice is to bring as many instant food from home as you can hot chocolate, indomie if you're from Indonesia, pasta sauce anything that you can only find in your country, bring it to China and lastly, the thing that I hate most about China is sometimes, man, some toilets are nasty oh my gosh it's usually just in the crowded places um, for example, in the library during exam seasons Ugh, just you. I don't even want to think about it not all the toilets are nasty, like some of them are actually okay and decent okay, that's my take on SJTLU and living in China that's pretty much all that comes to mind and now I'm going to answer some of your questions first question are the English classes still good? Um, I don't know if this means classes using the English language or the actual English classes I'm going to assume it's using the English language it depends on the teachers some teachers have really clear pronunciation some, do some don't pretty much it depends on your major I find that the business major have more foreign teachers compared to STEM majors the proportion is basically half-half maybe it's leaning more towards the local Chinese but there are also a lot of international teachers there too during the room tour, you said you brought your pillow from home is it in a suitcase or is it sent by mail? I brought it in my suitcase I vacuumed my pillows and then I put it in my luggage the first time I went to China, my mom and my brother came with me so there are a lot of free space that I can use for any of my other stuff because the pillow took like half the space of the suitcase but a girl gotta do what she gotta do I can't sleep without the hugging pillow thing so yeah. <laughs> also, do you know how to send packages there in case there are things that you forget? Usually my mom will ask any other parents who are coming to Suzhou to like visit their children and most of the time that's how I get you know the things that I forgot to bring from back home or 
if there are some things that I have run out, like spices or snacks, something like that. Is there a lot of Chinese students too? How's the percentage compared to international students? Um, the Chinese students are obviously the biggest proportion of students there. I'm not too sure about the percentage, but 60 to 40, 60% 60 local Chinese and 40% international students. Maybe it could be more. The thing is that every single year, there are tons of exchange students from the UK coming to HTLU to learn the Chinese language. Them alone take a lot of that international student proportion. Is SJTLU a good university and why? I feel like overall, yeah, it is. Because first of all, you can learn Chinese, which I feel like is a pretty big plus point. Second of all, the facility is amazing. Third of all, the subjects, like the materials taught, is actually pretty challenging and informative and useful. I think the only downside, and I feel like this is not just for SJTLU, it's for a lot of universities out there sometimes you just don't fit in with the teachers and when that happens it can be quite tough because then you have to depend on well basically yourself but overall it's it's promising not to mention the fact that you will graduate with double degree from university of liverpool and sjtlu itself i feel like overall it's a smart decision to come to sjtlu are there any clubs both art, music, sports, etc. clubs and party clubs, lol. I got you, girl. <laughs> there are tons of school clubs and the party clubs, you're safe, girl. There are a lot of party clubs too and they're pretty lit, they're pretty cool. There are a lot of bars. Nightlife is A-OK -okay in Suichou. I don't know why my friend asked me this. Like, he doesn't even go to SJTLU. He goes to Harpin or something. Are the food in SJTLU cafeteria good? They're pretty good. They're like their home cooked food, so it reminds me a lot of home. Yeah, they're pretty good. It's just that they get pretty freaking boring after a while. Was it difficult getting into SJTLU? Honestly, no. I feel like SJTLU is one of the easiest universities to like get into because they don't really ask for much. I don't know. I feel like it's. I feel like they're pretty flexible in accepting students, especially if you're an international student, it's pretty freaking easy. Can you be a vegetarian in SJTLU? Like, is the vegetarian food accessible for students? Yes. Vegetarian, yes. Vegan, not so much. Suchu is pretty big on like vegetables and stuff, so you can just pick the food that don't have meat in it. But for vegan, I feel like that might be harder because not being able to eat dairy alone is kind of hard to find in Suchou. But vegetarian, yeah, it's pretty accessible. How was your experience moving to SGTLU? It wasn't that much of a hassle, to be honest. The first time I arrived in the dorm, they set a room for me and then they gave me a car key and then I had to go to the police station. It sounds like a hassle, but honestly, now looking back, not really because you just have to like cross the street and go to the police station. They're used to dealing with international students. It's not confusing at all. And then you get your room key, you move everything in, and that's it. I also have friends who showed me around places, so that was very helpful. Did you experience any culture shock? Honestly, not as bad as I expected to. I feel like in this school area, they know that their city has a lot of foreigners, and so they don't really see you as an alien, if I guess you can say. Um, it just gets funny sometimes because I look Chinese and I can't really speak Chinese that well so whenever I tell them that I'm a foreigner, they go, what? But like, you look like that. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but no, no, no culture shock. My battery is about today. Do people go drinking together? Yes, yes, they do. Especially for foreigners, we go drinking a lot and go to clubs, go to have parties, go to have fun. It's kind of like a weekly thing. For people to go drinking about scholarships for international graduate undergraduate students the only thing i can say is write a good personal statement and get good recommendation letters from your teachers or your um, academic advisors and that's pretty much will lock your scholarship how are the roommates arrangement there is no arrangement you basically get thrown into a flat and you hope for the best usually the female and males are separated but there's no like trick rule that female and male cannot be in the same flat together. Um, you just need the agreement of all your other flatmates and you can have mixed gender. Okay, I think that's it.
yes great my battery is about to die thank you guys so much for watching i hope it helps you in any sort of way if there's still any question you want to ask then feel free to just contact me through instagram or just put it down in the comment section give this video a big thumbs up if you like it and please subscribe to my channel if you want to that would mean so so much to me and i will see you guys next time bye